Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. Looks like we're going to be trying to capture some cryptic creatures again today. Better strap up, brother. It's going to be a long one. The subscribers sent in some truly fascinating stories of what they claim to be cryptid encounters. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it be a cryptid story or something else, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Joining me today is a fellow narrator by the name of Nightstalker. My good friend Celestial Nor. They have a channel where they read scary stories, and if you enjoy the voice, be sure to check it out. You can find the link to do so at the top of the description. Now, without any further ado, let's get into these creepy stories sent in by viewers just like you. So this story begins around roughly 2016. I had recently graduated high school and was working a full-time second shift job. Right around this same time, I had an obsession with strange haunted places and things. I used to go to a haunted cemetery, an abandoned building, with quite a few scares on my record, but nothing too terrifying. That is, until about three months after when I had one of the weirdest dreams of my entire life. To explain it as clear as I can, it was when I actually dreamt myself waking up in my bedroom. I noticed the motion lights in my garage outside were on, so I got out of bed and walked over to the window. What I saw outside standing in my driveway was a single, tall figure. His head was about even with where the light is mounted on the garage, so at least 8 feet tall. I noticed he was wearing a grim reaper-like robe, but the face, well, the face was like a deer skull. It looked like the skull of maybe a, a cross of a deer and a horse, it's hard to say. It was definitely some sort of deer skull though. He was just standing there, staring at me, motionless. He stood stiller than the trees next to him and stared into my soul. Anyway, at this point, I actually woke up in real life, and to my horror, the motion light was on, but when I went to check, there was no one or nothing outside. This was freaky and quite frankly had me freaked out for a good week or so, and then I eventually forgot about it. Fast forward to 2019. I'm in college now and I'm roughly six hours away from home. Now recently I've been seeing this thing with my own eyes while I'm awake. I see it out my window standing in the neighboring field sometimes. Sometimes when I'm doing homework, I'll look over and I'll see it. I've been seeing it walk past my door as well. Inside my building, multiple times. I just try to ignore him, or it, or whatever it is. It just seems like it's slowly getting closer and closer to me, and I'm not sure why. I notice that it seems to appear when I'm in times of really high stress. The first time I saw him was probably the roughest patch of my life prior to this point. I'm honestly not even sure what this thing is or what it means, but believe me when I say this is scary looking, it's intimidating, and it looks evil. This is coming from somebody who doesn't get spooked easily at all. If anybody knows what this could be, please let me know. I've done some research and I come up with like skimwalkers and stuff like that, but I really don't think this is the same thing. My friends and I thought going for a hike would be a fun activity, since all we do is play video games. We live in a city that I cannot say for private reasons. We all took the same car. There were four of us, Tara, Robert, Olivia, and me. Emily, the driver, took four hours, and once we got there, the sun was starting to set. There was traffic, so it had taken much longer than it should have. Although it was getting darker, we did not want to waste this trip. I walked out of the car. All of my friends had gotten out on the other side with the trail on it, but I, being my dumb self, got out on the side with all the overgrown grass. As I got out, I looked at my feet, then I looked up. Oh my god, I screamed, and everybody came around the car to look. 
Oh, holy shit, Robert said while he stared at all the blood and body parts of an animal scattered. The smell hit me like a wave. My eyes started to water, and I went back into the car. I looked out the window at everybody else. They all started to walk up the trail, so I ran up to catch up with them. We have to make up as much time as we can. It's getting dark, and we don't have time to stare at what happens when animals die, Robert told me. I glanced around. Something wasn't right. I looked to my left and stopped dead in my tracks. Olivia had seemed to notice, too, because she screamed. Olivia had grabbed my hand, and we both ran to the other side of the woods. As we ran and left the group, I tried to make out what I saw. The antlers, long arms, skin so tight and pale you could see bones, and the black eyes that seemed to suck in all light. This wasn't a wolf. It was a wendigo. Oliver and I kept on running until it was so dark we could not see anymore. I lay down on the fallen leaves next to the big rock. At this point, I did not care about any bugs. I slowly drifted off into a dead sleep. Soon after I woke up, screams were all that I could hear. Then it all stopped. A voice came out from the darkness. Help! A voice with no energy in it called out. I got up and ran with Olivia until we found our car again. I was bleeding from all the pricker bushes. I waited with Olivia in the car until any others could come. Hours had passed, and through those hours, I stared at the woods, seeing yellow eyes occasionally showing through the car lights. Once the sun had started to rise, Tara came through the woods in tears. I found Robert. He was in the clearing next to the rock, dead. I realized he was who called out for help. Years later, I have now just started to tell people about what had happened. Never leave your friends alone in the woods at night. I am a stoner, plain and simple. Well, one time I bought around two to three grams and wanted to smoke. My parents are very strict about weed so I couldn't just roll up and smoke at my house. So, like an idiot, I thought it would be a good idea to go for a long blunt walk in the woods. I've done it a thousand times before and knew exactly what trail I was going to take and everything, since I basically lived in these woods as a kid. That said, it was like 4.30 in the afternoon in winter, so it gets dark pretty early. I don't care enough as though I had my phone and a lighter. I also carry my pocket knife everywhere I go just to be safe. As I was walking through the woods, I had barely lit my blunt when all of a sudden I heard a noise. I shine my light over to see what seems to be a deer. So I just shrug it off and continue my walk. Ten minutes in and I'm starting to feel pretty high, and decide it's too cold to walk anymore because I don't want to ruin my high with the cold. I start my walk back to my house, when I see the same deer but this time I got a good look at it. It was tall, maybe 6'5" maybe taller. I'm 17 and 5'8", so I'm not small, but I'm not the biggest. I immediately, like, freak out, realizing how tall this thing was. I look at its body, and notice it looks like it's got shot by something. It was bleeding profusely, but it was past hunting hours, and I was less than 200 feet from my, like, local apartment, so I'm pretty sure I would have heard a gunshot but I never heard one. After seeing the blood, I see its horrific face. The way this thing looked at me instantly sobered me up. It had this cold stare that not only bore into my soul, but cut me and left me in terror. Its jaw was half hanging off and bloody. Its skull was showing. The worst part, however, was the eyes. The cold, dead black eyes. After standing there just kind of looking at this thing, after a solid minute or two, it just starts walking towards me, one step at a time. Its movements were jagged and jerky, kinda like a broken toy that's supposed to be able to walk. I come to my senses after seeing it walk and realize it's on the trail leading back to my house. As I said though, I basically grew up in these woods. I knew every path and where every path took you. 
so I turn around and make a break for it. As I do, I hear this ear-piercing scream, unlike anything I've ever heard before. I kept running and running until I made it home. The entire time it sounded like it was right behind me. I make it to my house and ran straight from my room and cried. I had never seen anything like this. This thing. I got to school the next morning and asked my friends if they had heard the scream that night because we all lived pretty close to the woods. None of them had heard it and they thought I just smoked some laced weed or something. I know I didn't know and I just can't imagine something like this. I have gone back a few times but have never seen it again. I just want some insight on what this thing might be. I live in the middle of Pennsylvania, on the side of the Susquehanna River. I don't think it's Wendigos, because I don't think they're native there. But please help me and tell me what you think it might be. It'd be greatly appreciated. Before I tell you what happened that night, let me tell you who I am and when this happened. My name is Tyler and I'm 16. I'm a junior at a semi-private school. This event happened two years ago, almost three now, so bear with me on the details. The memories from that night are still a little foggy. But anyway, here I go. It was 2017, late October. I had just gotten home after a long day of school. I decided to hop on my PS4 and play some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 with some online friends. As hours passed, old and new friends came and went. I was home alone for the week because my mother and father went on a business trip to Georgia, as well as visiting family. It wasn't the first time that I had to be home alone for a long period of time. I usually went to bed around the time of 9.30, but since it was a Friday and I was home alone, I decided that I would stay up. 9.30 came, then 10, then 11, eventually midnight, and so forth and you get the point. My eyes felt heavy and were foggy because of how long I'd been playing video games, but the fact of me wearing contacts doesn't help either. I decided to check the time since I knew it was getting late. It was around 1.20 AM. I was in the middle of a match, so I didn't want to get up and turn everything off. I decided that I was going to finish up the current match I was in and go to bed. As I was finishing up the match, a putridly bad and musty smell had hit my nostrils. To be honest, it tensed me up for quite a bit and I gagged on how bad it was. I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep through it, so I played a couple of more matches and hoped for the smell to eventually go away, but that wasn't the case. Over time, minute by minute, it almost seemed that the scent was getting closer and stronger. I attempted to ignore it and continue playing my game. I have a noise-canceling headset, but I could swear that I heard footsteps from behind me but I remembered that I had 3D sound as well. So, being me, I ignored it. Then I heard tapping. I took off my headset to confirm that it was just the game, but then I heard it again. It was coming from the window behind me. It had shades over it, but with the outside light on, I saw a silhouette of something almost human-like. I stood in my room frozen in fear, looking at the silhouette, wondering if I was just delirious on sleep. But then its head ticked to the side like a bird, and it tapped on the window once again, in the same pattern. As adrenaline shot through my body, I decided, being the young, curious teen that I was, to open the shades. When I got closer, the stench got stronger and I could tell that now it was the smell of something decaying and dying. Could it be a dying animal that just so happened to stumble upon my window? I thought, but I remembered the tapping and how unison it was. I finally gained the courage to pull back the curtains, and I wish I hadn't. It had a human face, but where the eyes were supposed to be, there were just sockets. 
It had sharp teeth so jagged, I swear, it could tear through steel. Its face was decomposing and rotting. It looked like it had been dead for such a long time. I stood from where I opened the window shades in fear. I, I couldn't take my eyes off this thing. I don't know if it was looking at me or not because of its empty soulless eye sockets. Then it tilted its head with a sharp movement that startled me and I screamed. It got up with so much speed and went back into the woods. When it got up I saw its body and how contorted it was and how awkward it moved. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, for weeks even. I haven't seen this thing since that day. I'm only sharing this now because in class a couple of weeks ago, we learned about Native American cryptids and the skinwalker fit the description well. The only thing that's off is it usually takes the form of things that it's killed. My question is, who was the person it killed to take their form? I just hope that's the only time I ever see that thing, because who knows what it might do if we cross paths again. I still think about this often, and while it doesn't necessarily scare me, it always gives me this uneasy feeling of, what the heck was this thing? My grandfather and I were on our weekend golf cart ride. He lived in a country club community with a large golf course. It was probably two miles from the ocean canal as the crow flies. We were riding around the course and I was blissfully enjoying our time together when I had the something is watching me feeling wash over me. We were passing over a small bridge, literally maybe two feet off the ground, that went over a swampy area. Tall wheat grass surrounding us, maybe three or four feet high. I locked eyes with a creature that was squatted down in the brush, maybe seven feet from the trail. It was ruddy tan, with feathers and large, dead eyes. It was just staring at me, not blinking in the slightest. Its face had human-like features, but they were off. It had no lips. They were almost blurred. We were probably going only 4 miles per hour, so I looked at it for a reasonable amount of time. I couldn't distinguish any arms. It just looked like a mass of feathers, much like an owl that has its feathers ruffled. It was the size of a large man, squatted down. After going over the pass, I asked my grandfather to turn around. Not even 3 minutes had passed and the thing was gone from its original position. This was in eastern North Carolina. I haven't heard or seen any folklore on cryptid creatures that match that description in North Carolina. If anybody has any idea what this thing could be, please let me know, I would love to know. And thank you Swamp Dweller for sharing my story. Okay. So I've looked into many different cryptids in the New York area, and I have no clue what this thing was. In 2013, I lived in Jamestown, New York, with my grandfather, and there was this chained off dirt road at the end of the street where people would dump old furniture and things that couldn't fit in a normal garbage bin. I would always go back there after school and follow the dirt road down this muddy stream area that went to my knees, and every day I would wander in further and further until one day I ended up in a field area. I could see woods in the distance at the edge of the trees. There was something that looked like a huge cat, but it had antlers, and we were just staring at each other until a car horn went off and it ran off into the woods. As soon as it ran off, I felt like I had to get out of there as fast as I could. I've looked into the different types of big cats in Jamestown, and it wasn't a bobcat, that's for sure. The closest thing I could compare it to would be a mountain lion, and I've read rumors about mountain lion sightings in New York, but it wouldn't explain the antlers. There was also a report of mountain lions with horns in Idaho, but those ones were small and tooth-like. All I know is that the thing was not a deer, and every time I think about it I feel sick. 
If anybody has ever heard of any sort of creature or has any sort of idea what it could have been, please let me know, because I'm out of ideas, and I'm pretty much out of places to research. I am not a believer in the supernatural or paranormal. At best, I am an intrigued skeptic. I do not hold stock in spirits, magic, aliens, or the paranormal. I have nothing to gain from fabricating this story. Roughly about a year ago, my wife and I observed a strange creature on the side of the road, within 15 or 20 yards away from us. I slowed down, and it stopped moving and watched us pass by. There was no mistaking what we saw. At the time, I had no frame of reference for what we had seen. It was bipedal, and taller than a man would be, maybe eight or almost nine feet tall. It was thin, but not necessarily skinny, if that makes sense. Muscular, slender, but not gaunt. It was white, almost reflective white and its knee joints were inverted like the forelegs of a horse. Its arms hung at its sides like a humanoid, and it had hands. But its head was deer-like, with a snout and antlers. It was very close. There is no chance we were mistaken or confused. This occurred in central Illinois. I intend to find physical proof of this creature. Any information advice, help, or interested contacts would be much appreciated. In the meantime, I have been spending time in the area, talking to locals and walking the woods. A lot of the locals will admit to seeing albino deer, but the stories always left them feeling nervous or uneasy if not downright afraid. These are people who would not be afraid of any kind of deer. It leads me to believe there is a kind of conscious disconnect from what they know they actually saw. I don't expect to find the thing, but who knows. I'm mainly looking for an odd or inconsistent animal behavior or bizarre markings and the like. Again, any advice is welcome. I don't know what I saw, but I'm absolutely terrified. I'm hoping one of your viewers could maybe tell me what I had encountered. I was invited to a friend's house to play on a Friday night after school had let out. My friend who I'll call Sebastian ordered pizza for us. We spent most of the night watching TV and playing on his PlayStation. We stayed up late until 1am, and that's when things started to go south. Just as we were about to start playing another new game, I distinctly heard footsteps outside of his house. It was in the middle of fall, so all the crunchy leaves were on the ground, making it obvious to tell when someone or something was walking around outside. I wasn't too distracted by it, since my friend lived in a busy area, and it wasn't too uncommon for people to be out this late. But the sounds of footsteps got closer to the house. I'm quite paranoid, so I thought that someone was coming to break in. I told my friend and he didn't really acknowledge me since he was focused on the game. Then we heard a single knock at the door. I never seen my friend go completely calm to fully alert in a split second like that. Now, I was terrified and I could tell my friend was too. My friend told me to be quiet as he slowly crawled towards the window to see what was outside. I motioned for him not to, but he didn't listen. He slowly peered through the curtains. I could see in his facial expression that he had seen something terrifying. He closed the curtain and crawled back to me. He had the I've seen a ghost look on his face. I decided to go look for myself as I was curious. As I started to get up, my friend grabbed my arm and held me back. Then whatever was out there let out an eerie clicking sound. It sounded like a predator. My friend let go of my arm and I took this chance to see what was outside. I peered through the curtains, and what I saw chilled me to the bone. There was this man standing in the driveway. He was just standing there making this clicking sound. It was creepy. I thought it was just some guy playing a prank on us. I'd have tried to be tough and so I yelled out to the guy, Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? 
Then the man turned to look right at me through the window. I couldn't make out any facial features except for its eyes. They were glowing. They had this distinct shine to them. Then the man turned around and ran toward the back of the house. Whatever this thing was, it was trying to break in through the back door. Luckily it was locked, but I wasn't going to take any chances. My friend and myself grabbed a knife. After a few attempts of trying to break in, this thing gave up. I could see through the window on the door that the thing ran in all fours and jumped over the neighbor's fence. This is the scariest thing I've ever experienced, and I'm not sure what I and my friend saw that night. I hope somebody listening maybe can tell us. I was driving my cousin to his place of work, and we got there early. It was still dark, and so we decided to wait for him next door, which is a gym and has plenty of light and cameras. As we were driving next door, there is a forest behind the building, and there is a small opening between the buildings that lead into the woods. As we were going across, we saw a deer and told my cousin, Hey, look, a deer. We both saw it, but almost immediately started to feel very weird. The more we looked at it, the more we felt something was just not right. My cousin then said, Why don't his eyes reflect your lights? I had my lights right on him and he was right. I didn't see any reflection. The uneasy feeling grew more and more until I realized it was fear. I thought to myself, Why the heck am I afraid? Then I turned to my cousin and told him, Hey, I don't think that's a deer, dude. We looked back at it and then it started to move. Its feet moved like it was noodles. All four of them, like if you had long string, and you moved it back and forth really fast. That's what we saw. I started to say out loud, Whoa, whoa. I pulled out my revolver from my holster, and as if this thing knew it, like it all of a sudden sprinted back into the forest. Me and my cousin kind of nervously laughed off what had just happened, but we still talk about it, and we have made sure not to leave the house anymore without our guns. We both have our licenses to carry and both have our licenses to kill big game, but to my question, is it illegal for me to go into the forest and hunt this thing down and kill them and post my findings on social media? I know this sounds like horse hockey, of the highest order, but the thing is, if these things are out there, then I want people to know that they are there and I want them to be aware that these things are in this world. Again, I cannot express how much of a serious question I am trying to make here. Thank you for your time. Let me start off with a little bit of background information. I live in a very forested area surrounded by a bunch of mountains. There's a stream across the road, but we live a ways away from it. Our house sits more at the top of a mountain, surrounded by towering trees. Our neighbors are somewhat close, but we can barely see each other's houses. We have three dogs, one has passed away since then, and three cats. Our neighbor also has dogs and cats, so there definitely isn't a shortage of pets anywhere. Anyways, that's what you need to know. It was in the middle of the week sometime in late August or early September. It was still hot since it was the end of summer, so my mom and I slept with our windows open. We never worried about the windows being open because, statistically speaking, we were a lot safer in the forest than in the city. Everything was the same as usual until 4am came around. We were woken by a ear-splitting guttural scream. We ran into the living room to check on each other, and we were all okay. The screaming continued and it was at the same pacing. There would be a pause for about 2-3 to three seconds and then a scream. The screaming lasted for all of about 5 minutes and then stopped abruptly. My mom and I closed all of the windows and drew the blinds. None of our pets seemed to care what the screams were doing echoing through the house. Which I thought was very strange and out of character for them. A leaf could fall and they would lose their minds. So why the sudden silence? Because the screaming stopped, my mom decided to call the sheriff rather than the entire police force. The officer kept saying that it was probably nothing, 
but would drive by anyways. We stayed up waiting for the sheriff to drive by, and eventually he did. He didn't investigate much at all, though. He did exactly what he said he would do, which was a drive-by. My mom and I struggled to sleep that night, but we did. The next day, we did some investigating and called all of our neighbors to make sure they were okay. But when we called, all of them said they didn't hear a thing that night. We were in disbelief that no one heard it because it was so loud. So we started thinking that there must have been a domestic violence cover-up, or maybe someone had a really weird kink. Luckily, the final neighbor we called gave us a somewhat helpful answer. He told us that he didn't hear it himself, but he had heard sounds like that in the forest before. Now, it could be a mountain lion screaming, but when we looked it up, it didn't sound like that. It's not the same scream at all. But we also found some tracks. After more research and listening to Swamp Dweller videos, I think it may be on the spectrum of a skimwalker or a wendigo. What do you guys think? Am I just overthinking this? So, a long while ago, me and my very close friend got bored and decided to discover the nearby woods. We lived in a secluded area where we had thick forest around us for miles, and frankly, the rural area was boring. We had no one from our age and no internet, so while we were sitting aimlessly, we decided to pack some stuff up and wander into the woods. Now, my friend is a huge guy, mainly because he's obsessed with bodybuilding, so it was a bit hard for someone to scare him, but as we walked in, we both had an eerie feeling that we were being watched. The mood was tense, and strangely, the woods were dead silent. No birds chirping, no wind, and no sound of an animal or insect, not even a cricket. Approximately after 20 minutes of nothing but scaring ourselves, we heard a bark. Where I live, we have stray dogs both in the streets and in the wooded areas, and the ones that are in the wooded areas are not as friendly as the ones in the streets, because they are mainly very hungry. We stopped in our tracks and paid close attention to where the sound was coming from. It was coming from our left, and sounded pretty close. However, as the bark kept on, we both realized there was something off about it. I don't know how to put it into words, but it was almost like someone was trying to impersonate a dog, doing a very good job of it, but not at the same time. Then, we realized another odd thing about our supposed canine friend. The bark was repetitive, like it was playing on a speaker on repeat. Then, we realized another odd thing. My friend said that something is off, and he is genuinely creeped out, and I'm not gonna lie, I was shaking. You might say that it's quite natural to get creeped out in the woods when odd things like this happen, especially in the middle of the night, out in the middle of nowheres, but this was different. Every single fiber on our bodies wanted us to get the heck out of there, and we were way too scared to move. Finally, I told my friend to run, and quite reluctantly, he obliged. We ran like our lives were depending on it, and still felt like that thing was chasing us. We were out of breath when we found our way back, and my buddy said he heard branches breaking as we were hauling out of there, and he was on the verge of crying hysterically out of pure fear. The strangest thing, however, is the fact that we both live in a country that has nothing to do with America, let alone Native American culture. What do you think was chasing and stalking us back there? Do you have any similar experiences? From what I can find online, it really matches the skimwalker lores. But as I said, we don't even live in America. So could that even be possible? Before I tell you what happened that night, let me tell you who I am and when this happened. My name is Tyler. I'm 16 and I'm a junior at a semi-private school. This event happened two years ago, almost three now, so bear with me on the details. The memories from that night are still a little foggy. But anyway, uh, here I go. It was 2017, late October I think. I had just gotten home after a long day of school. 
I decided to hop on my PS4 and play some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 with some online friends. As the hours passed, old and new friends had come and gone, and I was home alone for the week because my mother and father went on a business trip to Georgia, as well as visiting some family. It wasn't the first time I had to be home alone for a long period of time. I, I usually went to bed around uh, 9.30. But since it was a Friday and I was home alone, I decided I would stay up. 9.30 came, and then 10, and then 11, then midnight, so on and so forth. Uh, you get the point. My eyes felt heavy and were foggy because of how long I was playing the video game, but the fact that I was wearing contacts uh, didn't help either. I decided to check the time since I knew that it was getting late. It was 1.20 a.m. I was in a match, so I didn't want to get up and turn everything off. I decided that I was going to finish up the current match, and then I was going to go to bed. As I was finishing up the match, a putridly bad and musty smell hit my nostrils. To be honest, it tensed me up for quite a bit, and I gagged at how bad it was. I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep through it, so I played a couple more matches, hoping that the smell would eventually go away. But that wasn't the case. Over time, minute by minute, it almost seemed like the scent was getting closer and stronger. I attempted to ignore it and continue to play my game. I have a noise-canceling headset, but I could swear that I heard footsteps from behind me. But then I remembered I had the 3D sound on as well. So, being me, I ignored it. Then I heard tapping. I took off my headset to confirm that it was the game. Then I heard it again. It was coming from the window behind me. It had shades over it, but with the outside light on, I saw a silhouette of something almost human-like. I stood in my room frozen in fear, looking at the silhouette, wondering if I was just delirious on sleep, but then its head ticked to one side like a bird, and it tapped on the window once again, in the same pattern. As adrenaline shot through my body, I decided, being the curious young teen that I was, to open the shades. When I got closer, the stench got stronger, and I could tell now that it was the smell of something decaying and dying. Could it be a dying animal that just so happened to stumble upon my window, I thought? But then I remembered the tapping and how in unison it was. I finally got the courage to pull back the curtains, and I wish I hadn't. It had a human face, but where the eyes were supposed to be, there were just sockets. It had sharp teeth so jagged I could swear it could tear through steel. Its face was decomposing and rotting. It looked like it had been dead for such a long time. I stood from where I had opened the window shades in fear. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of this thing. I didn't know if it was looking at me or not because of its empty, soulless eye sockets. Then it tilted its head with a sharp movement that startled me, and I screamed. It got up with so much speed, and then it went back into the woods. I saw its body and how contorted it was and how awkward it moved. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, or weeks even. I haven't seen the thing since that day. And I'm only sharing this now because in class a couple of weeks ago, we learned about Native American cryptids, and the skinwalker fit the description well. The only thing off is that it usually takes the form of the things it has killed. My question is, who is the person it killed to take their form? I just hope that's the only time I, I ever see that thing, because who knows what it might do if we ever cross paths again. I live in Utah, more northern, not Navajo Nation, but I'm only about three hours from the Adam Tanium Skimwalker Ranch, for a reference to how close I am to Skimwalker territory. I live in a neighborhood on the very top of the mountain. Surrounding my neighborhood is just the mountains and nothing else, so basically just a neighborhood carved into the mountainside. Only clearings were houses and yards. Everything else was very wooded. Anyways, I'm not scared of the forest or mountains at all. I don't mind being alone. The only thing that worries me is other humans, and cougars sometimes. As I am a young girl, I've slept in the mountains a lot with my dad's dog and a friend. 
Sometimes, the dark spooks me, but not dark forests or anything like that in particular. I'm pagan, and really big into spirituality and connection with nature and the earth, so, for the most part, I find comfort exclusively when I'm outdoors. So when I do feel uneasy or afraid, when I'm in nature, I always feel like it's for a good reason. I never ignore it. I usually get home from work pretty late, around 10.30 at night. This whole drive home I came upon the mountain. I was feeling really uneasy this day, and I was dreading getting out of my car and walking into my house. I do have a fear of skimwalkers and entities alike, and I know that attracts them, so I always try to shake those thoughts off as soon as they enter my head. But they always do. That night was no different, but I felt like my fear was for a reason. I didn't want to be outside for a second longer, so I just got out of my car and ran to my back door. I was so nervous. It was that horrible feeling where you feel like if you look behind you, something horrible will happen. Nothing did, luckily. I locked my doors and went to sleep. That night was normal. In the morning, however, I went outside and there was a bone fragment outside of my house near my porch. Not saying it was human, probably animal. It looked like it came from a large bone. But yet again, it was just a piece. Probably a deer. I know I live near coyotes and predators, and there's probably a logical explanation for this, but the bone was dry, not previously removed from something. It was old, and it had no meat or blood on it. It was just weird that it showed up overnight, and that's not the last thing though. There were creepy markings on it, like somebody had carved into this bone. And it wasn't there the day before, I know that. I don't have a dog at this house, so it wasn't a, anything it was, that was dug up or something like that, you know? Just the weird feeling the night before, and then the creepy bone with markings on it. Super creepy. I did talk to some Navajo friends, and they have mentioned that they have heard stories from elder folk who talk about being cursed by skimwalkers in the same way. So, I'm really hoping that's not what happened to me. This was around three years ago. I was 10 and my older stepbrother was 11. My dad and stepmom just got married and I and my older stepbrother were home alone at around 5.30 a.m. or so. We were watching Netflix, but it buffered constantly. So us being the impatient kids we were, decided to go outside and practice bow shooting, which is what we did a lot. We got out there and everything seemed okay. There was a lot of dew on the ground and the sun was just coming up. We walked for about two minutes to our little spot we made for our bow slash firearm practice. We had fired a few arrows, then my stepbrother started acting skittish, but took two more turns, and when his turn came for a third time, he turned white and said, I think I'll sit this one out, which I thought was weird because he was so eager to get out there. I shot a few more arrows and he shook me and pointed at an old burn pile a good deal away. A white, lifeless looking face was half peeked out from behind it. Me, my stepbrother, and the creature stared eye to eye at each other for what I think was around two minutes, until my stepbrother moved his foot onto a twig and broke it, and I guess it scared the creature because it made a sound I'll never forget. It was a screech that sounded like a panther, being murdered by a screech owl. I remember running inside and locking the door until my dad got home. All I can say is we didn't go outside alone again for a very, very long time after that. I know the story was short and maybe not the scariest thing you've ever read, but thank you for sharing it, Swamp Dweller. I recently started researching skimwalkers as I'm a big horror fan, and body horror is what scares me the most. As I'm reading stories I am noticing scary parallels to what I saw as a child. I was in the woods outside my house with my dog, and each time I went in, I'd go in further, and this time was the furthest I had ever gotten. I found a sort of broken down brick building. It was only big enough to be some kind of shed, and only had three walls which were really only about four feet tall. 
On the outside of the structure were a pile of deer skin, and on the inside were deer bones. It was a really long time ago, so I could be remembering something wrong, but I specifically remember there being no meat on those bones. I booked it home, and decided not to go back into the woods, at least not with it just being me and my dog. Later on in life, some of the local kids come up and ask me to go into the woods with them because one of them had apparently seen something weird. So, I tag along and we eventually make it pretty deep when we all see this creature crawling up a hill. I should clarify that the woods here sort of form a V-shape with a creek running down the center. We were on one side of the V, and it was on the opposite. It looks like it could have been some sort of dog with very short white hair like a greyhound, or a dog with no fur at all. It was super pale and quite lanky. The joints were normal, like a dog would be, but they just looked distorted and wrong. The hind legs looked normal, but its front legs bent more like a person dragging itself. It was having trouble climbing the hill as it was fall, and it looked like it kept sliding down from the dead leaves covering the ground. It was broad daylight, but we all unanimously were scared crapless and decided to book it back home. This was back when I was in middle school, and nothing has happened since then. I also have never returned to the woods since. Now mind you, the woods are by no means in the middle of nowhere here. We were easily only a three minute sprint away from a neighborhood, no matter what direction we went. So it could have easily been a runaway dog and something just maybe hit it like a car or something, I don't know. Fear made me think it was worse than it really was probably, but that's why I'd like to hear others' opinions on this. So first off, I would like to say that this is 100% true. Now, weirdly, while this whole story involves me, I didn't witness a thing. So some pretext. I have been vacationing at private campgrounds my entire life. My family owns property in the Mohawk Trails not too far from Heath, Massachusetts. Beautiful land. Historic property. Everywhere you go you can see some stone structures and property lines dating all the way back to the time of the Mohawk Indians. As I said, I've been camping there my entire life and still do. Nothing ever happened, paranormal at least, till this time around. Go back for about five years. My brother still calls this my skimwalker story, although I'm not totally convinced. It is weird though. So five years ago, me, my brother, and my two cousins were camping for a weekend. It was very calm and peaceful. I was at the private lake fishing off the dock not catching anything good. I caught a pickerel and tossed it into the woods. I continued fishing. Suddenly, I hear, Josh, my name come from the right. It was from a good distance away, so it was pretty faint. Now, where the dock was, if I looked right, I could see an expanse of land that wraps around the lake. There were trees and shrubs blocking my view of the path. That's where the voice came from. I recognized it as my little brother. So I call back. I'm on the dock. I see him around the corner and he stares at me bewildered. He looks back into the woods and back at me. So I ask him, what's up? Were you just in the woods? Like, running through the woods? He looked bewildered. No, I said. How could I be there and be back here so quickly? I replied. He looked back and then at me again and says, dude, I, I just saw you there but you were running that way. He points back in the direction he came from. But I couldn't hear twigs snapping or leaves rustling. That's the weird part. Mind you, back then I was around 290 pounds. I was a big guy. I'm now down to 210 and in the military, proud to say, but that's besides the point. Now, remember how I said I threw a fish in the woods? I then realized I could no longer hear it flopping around anymore. I threw it in around 5 minutes prior, so I go back to look for it, and it's completely gone. I searched for a 30 foot radius and it was just gone, and there was no sign of animal life coming through and grabbing it. So that was very odd, and to this day my bro tells the story. Then that same day my mother comes up to me at our site and asks me, Josh, did you go into the female shower room at the rec hall? 
she was very upset even though I didn't. I say no, are you insane? Why would I go in there? Apparently, she was trying to find an explanation because I found out a few days later she followed what she thought was me into the shower room and this figure was nowhere to be seen when she entered. Lastly, something not involving me, my two cousins were from different sides of the family and they didn't know each other all that well. So the last night we were there, my cousin, who is a female, we'll call her Carrie, wakes up in bed. The sun is beginning to rise. She turns over and sees my other cousin, we'll call him Jose, sitting in a chair and listening to headphones staring out the window. She turns back over and tries to fall asleep, but she can't. She feels uncomfortable since they don't know each other, so she turns back and he is completely gone, like this disappeared in thin air. Later on, it turned out, he never even left his bed. He was still asleep. Hey Swamp, this is a short but very interesting skinwalker story. So at my uncle's funeral, we were telling stories about skinwalkers. Now keep in mind right now we are in Oklahoma, but the first part of this story took place in Arizona. So further on, we were telling stories and my mom's boyfriend walks up and starts telling a story. And he said one time when he was about 17 years old, he was partying with friends out in the middle of the desert. And then, his ex-girlfriend got upset at one of his friends. So she walked about a mile down the desert road and he felt bad so he drove to get her in his old Camaro and hopped out and said, Hey, you want to walk around for a minute? Just us? And she says yes. So they walk around for five minutes. He says, you ever heard of a skinwalker? And she says yes. And so, he told her that they were attracted to you if you talk about them apparently. And she just laughs it off. They decide to walk back to his Camaro, when all of a sudden this funky looking man walks out of the middle of nowhere in the pitch black desert and says, hey, can I get a ride? My dad said he never hopped in the car and drove away faster with his ex and so that was the end of his first story. Now part two, he told us about this big black dog that used to come around and throw his mastiff and St. Bernard around like rag dolls. He said, one day, he shot at it, and the dog never came back. The very next day, we were driving in the middle of nowhere, like where houses wouldn't be for miles in Oklahoma, and all we saw was this big black dog on the side of the road, staring at us. And boy, did I almost pee my pants anyway. Thanks for sharing the story, Swamp. I know it's a bit short and anticlimactic, but I guess not all skinwalker stories are necessarily terrifying, huh? Hey, Swamp. This isn't the longest story, but it is one I won't ever forget. To give the scene, I live in Missouri, close to a big lake in the woods. One night, I was outside smoking a cigarette, as I usually did before bed. This night was pitch black as there was heavy overcast and no other lights turned on. I would always hear the normal night sounds. Coyotes, owls, and the like. This night, however, I was hearing a rather strange grunting sound that almost sounded like a dying cow at first. Not too worried. Just yet, I continued with my smoke and listened intently from the porch. The sound was seeming to get closer, and I ran inside to get my father, as he would usually know what this is, because he would usually like to sit outside and watch strange lights and whatnot in the sky, as he is a big fan of the paranormal as well. As we listened to this strange grunting, it was definitely getting closer by the minute. It sounded like as if a large animal was running through the woods, as you could hear the limbs and trees breaking. Really freaking out at this point, we look at each other. Like, what the hell? Thinking we're about to have this thing in our front yard, we step back to the door to make sure we have a quick escape if need be. Whatever it was, sounds like it is definitely bipedal. This creature was about to make its way into our field, but was stopped by our high voltage fence we have for our horses. You could hear the snap as whatever it was touched the fence. With a loud roar, it ran back off the way it came. We could hear it pushing through the woods like twigs. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot, a skimwalker, a dogman or what, but it was too close for comfort, and I always think about it any time I'm outside at night. 
My father and I still talk about it from time to time and speculate what it might be. A couple of years ago, I lived in a small town in Michigan. Me and my stepbrother, who we will call G and J, were going to go fishing one day. On our landlord's lake, so we got on our bikes and started to ride down the path from our house, but we didn't even get halfway before we felt like we were being watched and were hearing something running the corn beside us. Suddenly it just stopped. I was freaked out, but we kept on going till my older stepbrother hit the brakes on his bike so hard that I hit his back tire with my bike, and he said, Look up ahead. Do you see something, or is that just me? Me and my little brother Jay looked where he was pointing, and we saw something in the bushes beside the path just standing there, rocking back and forth. My little brother Jay dropped his bike and started crying. Me being the hard-headed kid thought it was nothing. So I started pedaling my bike ahead of G, my older brother, who kept looking back and mocking them, saying, It's probably just part of the bush. Man, I wish I was wrong. The second I got closer, I smelled something so bad and felt complete dread come over me. The thing is, I knew what it could be, but how? It's Michigan and nowhere near a native reservation. Why would a skimwalker be out there? I stopped dead in my tracks as soon as I heard it mock me in a real hoarse version of my voice. It's probably just the bush. I completely lost it. I dropped my bike and so did my brother. We ran as fast as we could back down the path to our house. We heard it in the back of the corn. I don't know why I wasn't screaming, but I was thinking about my brothers the entire time. I was thinking about the times we argued and the times we stood side by side as little schoolyard scraps. I didn't want to lose them. I didn't want to die. And that thing was only after one person. Me. But why me? It was keeping at my pace the entire time. If I slowed down, it slowed down. My older brother G noticed this and was obviously still scared, but pulled me to his left side to keep me away from the corn. He was putting himself between me and the thing until we ran into the house. It was empty because my dad and their mom were at work. We locked the door behind us and ran upstairs just to hear a loud screaming coming from the cornfield. My little brother Jay was still crying and I hugged my brother G who was just shaking. He grabbed his youth 20 gauge shotgun and kept us close to him in our upstairs room until our parents got home. We didn't mention anything to them but we also never went to get our bikes. I was on a walk about a month ago, and I was almost home. I saw something that looked like a white, golden brown husky with bright blue eyes, but something just felt really off about it. Its face seemed longer than a regular dog's, if that makes any sense. Its color was also kind of off for a husky. I don't really remember much about its body because of how freaked out I got. I wasn't exactly sure what to do. So I tried to act like I didn't feel that anything was off. Unfortunately, I accidentally made eye contact with it and stopped walking for some reason. I just felt too afraid to move. It was about 10 feet away and it walked up to me and then passed me. We maintained eye contact even as it was walking past until I heard someone else on the street and when I looked back at the thing, it was running away, but it was no longer a dog. It was now a deer. I don't really see many deer anymore, but that's the only way I can describe this. I don't know how it could have shapeshifted or changed so fast. It was like, it was almost like, I don't know, I guess it was like prancing in a way, the way it was leaving. Like, if you've ever seen Bambi, the way they prance around. I would have thought I had just seen a regular coyote if it was not for the coloring and the almost human-like eye contact, and the awful feeling I got when I saw it, and then the sudden transformation from a dog to a deer. Does anyone know if I saw a skimwalker? Or if not, does anyone know what I saw?
Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. Today we're going to be sharing some creepy and downright unexplainable stories from viewers just like you. These viewers claim to have encountered what they call skimwalkers and wendigos. I don't know about you, but skimwalkers never know when to go. Anyway, joining me today is my good friends from the Mailtopia podcast. He read story number two today, and if you enjoyed his voice, be sure to check out their podcast. They share scary stories all the time. You can find the link to do so in the description down below. If you have a story you'd like to share in a future video, whether it be a skimwalker or a wendigo story, I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Submit that at swampdweller.net. Now, hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and sit back, relax, and prepare to get spooked. So, a long while ago, me and my very close friend got bored and decided to discover the nearby woods. We lived in a secluded area where we had thick forest around us for miles, and frankly, the rural area was boring. We had no one from our age and no internet, so while we were sitting aimlessly, we decided to pack some stuff up and wander into the woods. Now, my friend is a huge guy, mainly because he's obsessed with bodybuilding, so it was a bit hard for someone to scare him, but as we walked in, we both had an eerie feeling that we were being watched. The mood was tense, and strangely, the woods were dead silent. No birds chirping, no wind, and no sound of an animal or insect, not even a cricket. Approximately after 20 minutes of nothing but scaring ourselves, we heard a bark. Where I live, we have stray dogs both in the streets and in the wooded areas, and the ones that are in the wooded areas are not as friendly as the ones in the streets, because they are mainly very hungry. We stopped in our tracks and paid close attention to where the sound was coming from. It was coming from our left, and sounded pretty close. However, as the bark kept on, we both realized there was something off about it. I don't know how to put it into words, but it was almost like someone was trying to impersonate a dog, doing a very good job of it, but not at the same time. Then, we realized another odd thing about our supposed canine friend. The bark was repetitive, like it was playing on a speaker on repeat. Then, we realized another odd thing. My friend said that something is off, and he is genuinely creeped out, and I'm not gonna lie, I was shaking. You might say that it's quite natural to get creeped out in the woods when odd things like this happen, especially in the middle of the night, out in the middle of nowheres, but this was different. Every single fiber on our bodies wanted us to get the heck out of there, and we were way too scared to move. Finally, I told my friend to run, and quite reluctantly, he obliged. We ran like our lives were depending on it, and still felt like that thing was chasing us. We were out of breath when we found our way back, and my buddy said he heard branches breaking as we were hauling out of there, and he was on the verge of crying hysterically out of pure fear. The strangest thing, however, is the fact that we both live in a country that has nothing to do with America, let alone Native American culture. What do you think was chasing and stalking us back there? Do you have any similar experiences? From what I can find online, it really matches the skimwalker lores. But as I said, we don't even live in America, so could that even be possible? Before I tell you what happened that night, let me tell you who I am and when this happened. My name is Tyler. I'm 16 and I'm a junior at a semi-private school. This event happened two years ago, almost three now, so bear with me on the details. The memories from that night are still a little foggy. But anyway, uh, here I go. It was 2017, late October I think. I had just gotten home after a long day of school. I decided to hop on my PS4 and play some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 with some online friends. 
As the hours passed, old and new friends had come and gone, and I was home alone for the week because my mother and father went on a business trip to Georgia, as well as visiting some family. It wasn't the first time I had to be home alone for a long period of time. I, I usually went to bed around uh, 9.30. But since it was a Friday and I was home alone, I decided I would stay up. 9.30 came, and then 10, and then 11, then midnight, so on and so forth. Uh, you get the point. My eyes felt heavy and were foggy because of how long I was playing the video game, but the fact that I was wearing contacts uh, didn't help either. I decided to check the time since I knew that it was getting late. It was 1.20 a.m. I was in a match, so I didn't want to get up and turn everything off. I decided that I was going to finish up the current match, and then I was going to go to bed. As I was finishing up the match, a putridly bad and musty smell hit my nostrils. To be honest, it tensed me up for quite a bit, and I gagged at how bad it was. I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep through it, so I played a couple more matches, hoping that the smell would eventually go away. But that wasn't the case. Over time, minute by minute, it almost seemed like the scent was getting closer and stronger. I attempted to ignore it and continue to play my game. I have a noise-canceling headset, but I could swear that I heard footsteps from behind me. But then I remembered I had the 3D sound on as well. So, being me, I ignored it. Then I heard tapping. I took off my headset to confirm that it was the game. Then I heard it again. It was coming from the window behind me. It had shades over it, but with the outside light on, I saw a silhouette of something almost human-like. I stood in my room frozen in fear, looking at the silhouette, wondering if I was just delirious on sleep, but then its head ticked to one side like a bird, and it tapped on the window once again, in the same pattern. As adrenaline shot through my body, I decided, being the curious young teen that I was, to open the shades. When I got closer, the stench got stronger, and I could tell now that it was the smell of something decaying and dying. Could it be a dying animal that just so happened to stumble upon my window, I thought? But then I remembered the tapping and how in unison it was. I finally got the courage to pull back the curtains, and I wish I hadn't. It had a human face, but where the eyes were supposed to be, there were just sockets. It had sharp teeth so jagged I could swear it could tear through steel. Its face was decomposing and rotting. It looked like it had been dead for such a long time. I stood from where I had opened the window shades in fear. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of this thing. I didn't know if it was looking at me or not because of its empty, soulless eye sockets. Then it tilted its head with a sharp movement that startled me, and I screamed. It got up with so much speed, and then it went back into the woods. I saw its body and how contorted it was and how awkward it moved. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night or weeks even. I haven't seen the thing since that day. And I'm only sharing this now because in class a couple of weeks ago we learned about Native American cryptids and the skinwalker fit the description well. The only thing off is that it usually takes the form of the things it has killed. My question is, who is the person it killed to take their form? I just hope that's the only time I, I ever see that thing, because who knows what it might do if we ever cross paths again. I live in Utah, more northern, not Navajo Nation, but I'm only about three hours from the Adam Tanium Skimwalker Ranch, for a reference to how close I am to Skimwalker territory. I live in a neighborhood on the very top of the mountain. Surrounding my neighborhood is just the mountains and nothing else, so basically just a neighborhood carved into the mountainside. Only clearings were houses and yards. Everything else was very wooded. Anyways, I'm not scared of the forest or mountains at all. I don't mind being alone. The only thing that worries me is other humans, and cougars sometimes. As I am a young girl, I've slept in the mountains a lot with my dad's dog and a friend. Sometimes, the dark spooks me, but not dark forests or anything like that in particular. I'm pagan, 
and really big into spirituality and connection with nature and the earth. So, for the most part, I find comfort exclusively when I'm outdoors. So when I do feel uneasy or afraid, when I'm in nature, I always feel like it's for a good reason. I never ignore it. I usually get home from work pretty late, around 10.30 at night. This whole drive home I came upon the mountain. I was feeling really uneasy this day, and I was dreading getting out of my car and walking into my house. I do have a fear of skimwalkers and entities alike, and I know that attracts them, so I always try to shake those thoughts off as soon as they enter my head. But they always do. That night was no different, but I felt like my fear was for a reason. I didn't want to be outside for a second longer, so I just got out of my car and ran to my back door. I was so nervous. It was that horrible feeling where you feel like if you look behind you, something horrible will happen. Nothing did, luckily. I locked my doors and went to sleep. That night was normal. In the morning, however, I went outside and there was a bone fragment outside of my house near my porch. Not saying it was human, probably animal. It looked like it came from a large bone. But yet again, it was just a piece. Probably a deer. I know I live near coyotes and predators, and there's probably a logical explanation for this, but the bone was dry, not previously removed from something. It was old, and it had no meat or blood on it. It was just weird that it showed up overnight, and that's not the last thing though. There were creepy markings on it, like somebody had carved into this bone. And it wasn't there the day before, I know that. I don't have a dog at this house, so it wasn't a, anything it was, that was dug up or something like that, you know? Just the weird feeling the night before, and then the creepy bone with markings on it. Super creepy. I did talk to some Navajo friends, and they have mentioned that they have heard stories from elder folk who talk about being cursed by skimwalkers in the same way. So, I'm really hoping that's not what happened to me. This was around three years ago. I was 10 and my older stepbrother was 11. My dad and stepmom just got married and I and my older stepbrother were home alone at around 5.30 a.m. or so. We were watching Netflix, but it buffered constantly. So us being the impatient kids we were, decided to go outside and practice bow shooting, which is what we did a lot. We got out there and everything seemed okay. There was a lot of dew on the ground and the sun was just coming up. We walked for about two minutes to our little spot we made for our bow slash firearm practice. We had fired a few arrows, then my stepbrother started acting skittish, but took two more turns, and when his turn came for a third time, he turned white and said, I think I'll sit this one out, which I thought was weird because he was so eager to get out there. I shot a few more arrows and he shook me and pointed at an old burn pile a good deal away. A white, lifeless looking face was half peeked out from behind it. Me, my stepbrother, and the creature stared eye to eye at each other for what I think was around two minutes, until my stepbrother moved his foot onto a twig and broke it, and I guess it scared the creature because it made a sound I'll never forget. It was a screech that sounded like a panther, being murdered by a screech owl. I remember running inside and locking the door until my dad got home. All I can say is we didn't go outside alone again for a very, very long time after that. I know the story was short and maybe not the scariest thing you've ever read, but thank you for sharing it, Swamp Dweller. I recently started researching skimwalkers as I'm a big horror fan, and body horror is what scares me the most. As I'm reading stories I am noticing scary parallels to what I saw as a child. I was in the woods outside my house with my dog, and each time I went in, I'd go in further, and this time was the furthest I had ever gotten. I found a sort of broken down brick building. It was only big enough to be some kind of shed, and only had three walls which were really only about four feet tall. On the outside of the structure were a pile of deer skin, and on the inside were deer bones. 
It was a really long time ago, so I could be remembering something wrong, but I specifically remember there being no meat on those bones. I booked it home and decided not to go back into the woods, at least not with it just being me and my dog. Later on in life, some of the local kids come up and ask me to go into the woods with them because one of them had apparently seen something weird. So, I tag along and we eventually make it pretty deep when we all see this creature crawling up a hill. I should clarify that the woods here sort of form a V-shape with a creek running down the center. We were on one side of the V and it was on the opposite. It looks like it could have been some sort of dog with very short white hair like a greyhound or a dog with no fur at all. It was super pale and quite lanky. The joints were normal like a dog would be, but they just looked distorted and wrong. The hind legs looked normal, but its front legs bent more like a person dragging itself. It was having trouble climbing the hill as it was fall, and it looked like it kept sliding down from the dead leaves covering the ground. It was broad daylight, but we all unanimously were scared crapless and decided to book it back home. This was back when I was in middle school, and nothing has happened since then. I also have never returned to the woods since. Now mind you, the woods are by no means in the middle of nowhere here. We were easily only a three minute sprint away from a neighborhood, no matter what direction we went. So it could have easily been a runaway dog and something just maybe hit it like a car or something, I don't know. Fear made me think it was worse than it really was probably, but that's why I'd like to hear others' opinions on this. So first off, I would like to say that this is 100% true. Now, weirdly, while this whole story involves me, I didn't witness a thing. So some pretext. I have been vacationing at private campgrounds my entire life. My family owns property in the Mohawk Trails not too far from Heath, Massachusetts. Beautiful land. Historic property. Everywhere you go you can see some stone structures and property lines dating all the way back to the time of the Mohawk Indians. As I said, I've been camping there my entire life and still do. Nothing ever happened, paranormal at least, till this time around. Go back for about five years. My brother still calls this my skimwalker story, although I'm not totally convinced. It is weird though. So five years ago, me, my brother, and my two cousins were camping for a weekend. It was very calm and peaceful. I was at the private lake fishing off the dock not catching anything good. I caught a pickerel and tossed it into the woods. I continued fishing. Suddenly, I hear, Josh, my name come from the right. It was from a good distance away, so it was pretty faint. Now, where the dock was, if I looked right, I could see an expanse of land that wraps around the lake. There were trees and shrubs blocking my view of the path. That's where the voice came from. I recognized it as my little brother. So I call back. I'm on the dock. I see him around the corner and he stares at me bewildered. He looks back into the woods and back at me. So I ask him, what's up? Were you just in the woods? Like, running through the woods? He looked bewildered. No, I said. How could I be there and be back here so quickly? I replied. He looked back and then at me again and says, dude, I, I just saw you there but you were running that way. He points back in the direction he came from, but I couldn't hear twigs snapping or leaves rustling. That's the weird part. Mind you, back then I was around 290 pounds. I was a big guy. I'm now down to 210 and in the military, proud to say, but that's besides the point. Now, remember how I said I threw a fish in the woods? I then realized I could no longer hear it flopping around anymore. I threw it in around 5 minutes prior, so I go back to look for it, and it's completely gone. I searched for a 30 foot radius and it was just gone, and there was no sign of animal life coming through and grabbing it. So that was very odd, and to this day my bro tells the story. Then that same day my mother comes up to me at our site and asks me, Josh, did you go into the female shower room at the rec hall? She was very upset even though I didn't. 
I say no, are you insane? Why would I go in there? Apparently, she was trying to find an explanation because I found out a few days later, she followed what she thought was me into the shower room, and this figure was nowhere to be seen when she entered. Lastly, something not involving me, my two cousins were from different sides of the family, and they didn't know each other all that well. So the last night we were there, my cousin, who is a female, we'll call her Carrie, wakes up in bed. The sun is beginning to rise. She turns over and sees my other cousin, we'll call him Jose, sitting in a chair and listening to headphones staring out the window. She turns back over and tries to fall asleep, but she can't. She feels uncomfortable since they don't know each other, so she turns back and he is completely gone, like this disappeared in thin air. Later on, it turned out, he never even left his bed. He was still asleep. Hey Swamp, this is a short but very interesting skinwalker story. So at my uncle's funeral, we were telling stories about skinwalkers. Now keep in mind right now we are in Oklahoma, but the first part of this story took place in Arizona. So further on, we were telling stories and my mom's boyfriend walks up and starts telling a story. And he said one time when he was about 17 years old, he was partying with friends out in the middle of the desert. And then, his ex-girlfriend got upset at one of his friends. So she walked about a mile down the desert road and he felt bad so he drove to get her in his old Camaro and hopped out and said, Hey, you want to walk around for a minute? Just us? And she says yes. So they walk around for five minutes. He says, you ever heard of a skinwalker? And she says yes. And so, he told her that they were attracted to you if you talk about them apparently. And she just laughs it off. They decide to walk back to his Camaro. When all of a sudden this funky looking man walks out of the middle of nowhere in the pitch black desert. And says, hey, can I get a ride? My dad said he never hopped in the car and drove away faster with his ex. And so that was the end of his first story. Now part two, he told us about this big black dog that used to come around and throw his mastiff and St. Bernard around like rag dolls. He said, one day, he shot at it, and the dog never came back. The very next day, we were driving in the middle of nowhere, like where houses wouldn't be for miles in Oklahoma, and all we saw was this big black dog on the side of the road, staring at us. And boy, did I almost pee my pants anyway. Thanks for sharing the story, Swamp. I know it's a bit short and anticlimactic, but I guess not all skinwalker stories are necessarily terrifying, huh? Hey Swamp, this isn't the longest story, but it is one I won't ever forget. To give the scene, I live in Missouri, close to a big lake in the woods. One night, I was outside smoking a cigarette, as I usually did before bed. This night was pitch black as there was heavy overcast and no other lights turned on. I would always hear the normal night sounds. Coyotes, owls, and the like. This night, however, I was hearing a rather strange grunting sound that almost sounded like a dying cow at first. Not too worried. Just yet, I continued with my smoke and listened intently from the porch. The sound was seeming to get closer, and I ran inside to get my father, as he would usually know what this is, because he would usually like to sit outside and watch strange lights and whatnot in the sky, as he is a big fan of the paranormal as well. As we listened to this strange grunting, it was definitely getting closer by the minute. It sounded like as if a large animal was running through the woods, as you could hear the limbs and trees breaking. Really freaking out at this point, we look at each other. Like, what the hell? Thinking we're about to have this thing in our front yard, we step back to the door to make sure we have a quick escape if need be. Whatever it was, sounds like it is definitely bipedal. This creature was about to make its way into our field, but was stopped by our high voltage fence we have for our horses. You could hear the snap as whatever it was touched the fence. With a loud roar, it ran back off the way it came. We could hear it pushing through the woods like twigs. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot, a skimwalker, a dogman or what, but it was too close for comfort, and I always think about it any time I'm outside at night. My father and I still talk about it from time to time and speculate what it might be. A 
A couple of years ago, I lived in a small town in Michigan. Me and my stepbrother, who we will call G and J, were going to go fishing one day. On our landlord's lake, so we got on our bikes and started to ride down the path from our house, but we didn't even get halfway before we felt like we were being watched and were hearing something running the corn beside us. Suddenly it just stopped. I was freaked out, but we kept on going till my older stepbrother hit the brakes on his bike so hard that I hit his back tire with my bike, and he said, Look up ahead. Do you see something, or is that just me? Me and my little brother Jay looked where he was pointing, and we saw something in the bushes beside the path just standing there, rocking back and forth. My little brother Jay dropped his bike and started crying. Me being the hard-headed kid thought it was nothing, so I started pedaling my bike ahead of G, my older brother, who kept looking back and mocking them, saying, It's probably just part of the bush. Man, I wish I was wrong. The second I got closer, I smelled something so bad and felt complete dread come over me. The thing is, I knew what it could be, but how? It's Michigan and nowhere near a native reservation. Why would a skimwalker be out there? I stopped dead in my tracks as soon as I heard it mock me in a real hoarse version of my voice. It's probably just the bush. I completely lost it. I dropped my bike and so did my brother. We ran as fast as we could back down the path to our house. We heard it in the back of the corn. I don't know why I wasn't screaming, but I was thinking about my brothers the entire time. I was thinking about the times we argued and the times we stood side by side as little schoolyard scraps. I didn't want to lose them. I didn't want to die. And that thing was only after one person. Me. But why me? It was keeping at my pace the entire time. If I slowed down, it slowed down. My older brother G noticed this and was obviously still scared, but pulled me to his left side to keep me away from the corn. He was putting himself between me and the thing until we ran into the house. It was empty because my dad and their mom were at work. We locked the door behind us and ran upstairs just to hear a loud screaming coming from the cornfield. My little brother Jay was still crying and I hugged my brother G who was just shaking. He grabbed his youth 20 gauge shotgun and kept us close to him in our upstairs room until our parents got home. We didn't mention anything to them but we also never went to get our bikes. I was on a walk about a month ago, and I was almost home. I saw something that looked like a white, golden brown husky with bright blue eyes, but something just felt really off about it. Its face seemed longer than a regular dog's, if that makes any sense. Its color was also kind of off for a husky. I don't really remember much about its body because of how freaked out I got. I wasn't exactly sure what to do so I tried to act like I didn't feel that anything was off. Unfortunately, I accidentally made eye contact with it and stopped walking for some reason. I just felt too afraid to move. It was about 10 feet away, and it walked up to me and then passed me. We maintained eye contact, even as it was walking past, until I heard someone else on the street, and when I looked back at the thing, it was running away, but it was no longer a dog. It was now... A deer. I don't really see many deer anymore, but that's the only way I can describe this. I don't know how it could have shapeshifted or changed so fast. It was like, it was almost like, I don't know, I guess it was like prancing in a way, the way it was leaving. Like, if you've ever seen Bambi, the way they prance around. I would have thought I had just seen a regular coyote if it was not for the coloring and the almost human-like eye contact, and the awful feeling I got when I saw it, and then the sudden transformation from a dog to a deer. Does anyone know if I saw a skimwalker? Or if not, does anyone know what I saw? Thanks for listening to these creepy 
and downright unexplainable Skimwalker and Wendigo encounters. I don't know about you guys, but I hope to never run into any of these creatures while I'm out exploring the woods. One of my favorite things to do is to just walk trails out in the middle of state and national parks, or even just go into the woods alone sometimes. Let's just hope I never run into a monster of my own. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, whether it be a Skimwalker story or something else, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp, and stories like yours to help keep this channel going. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you enjoyed my guest reader today from Mailtopia Podcast, be sure to check out their channel. You can find the link to do so in the description down below. It would be very much appreciated if you would subscribe and show them some love. If you're not aware, you can bring your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories with you everywhere you go. You can download them on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, and just about every other major podcasting platform out there. It really does mean a lot that you guys can take these stories everywhere and that you do choose to do so. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to comment the code word down below to let me know that you did and to confuse anybody who didn't. Today's code word is Purple Viking. See you guys soon with another creepy video.